What's going on, y'all? It's Rev, and welcome back to another Dawnless video. We're going to be getting right back into it, and we're going to chip, be chipping away at Dire Warnings once again. Uh, we just left off learning a little bit of the X, taking on Valamir. Done a lot of stuff in the past, but the most recent thing we did was start upgrading these lovely little chain blades that we call the Inferno's Fangs. And so what we're going to do today is finish those off and then we'll use them to upgrade our shock hammer and then we'll go start taking on some of the dire warnings behemoths such as Rockfall Scar and Firebrand Charog, Ragetail Nasher, Wind Reaver Shrike, etc. And so one more Blaze Patrol, perhaps two depending on where we're at. And yeah, got up for a moment, took a little break from the last video and um, had some lovely hummus and crackers. If you love me some hummus. I only recently discovered hummus, relatively recently. I'm almost 30 and I had hummus for the first time. And I was like, yeah, uh, it was, it was this year. It was this year, first time having hummus. Anyway. Let's see what we get. Maybe it's a Hellion. Maybe it's not. Hey, we got Embermane. Finally. I've been waiting for how many episodes? Whatever episode this is, I've been waiting to get Embermane. And we have... Let's go into the main menu here. We have... Not only are we getting the orbs. We have Light of Fire, which is uh, Embermane Breaks. Uh, I can wound... Oh, we can do brilliant if I had a and we only need a hammer for five by five we get a gold offense for core from that that's sweet mm, nothing else but we have light of fire and I want if I had this before I would totally be using ember mains rapture on the axe the uh this gives a burst of attack speed honestly you know I'm I'm gonna take that back I think that the strike lantern is pretty darn good for the axe in the early game when you're more established in and you want more damage and attack speed uh the ember main lantern is really great for the axe but uh cold light drask okay well we have one quest for ember main we're gonna use the sword and uh that's just because we have the plus five boreas sword already upgraded and i don't have any other frost weapon so that's a shame but i'm just gonna talk to talk and Oh, we can talk. Uh, we haven't even fought Embermain, so we'll talk about Embermain. Never mind. I uh, we fought the lesser Embermain, but that's that doesn't count. Um, we'll uh, we'll talk about Embermain because there's actually this fight teaches you a lot, and I was really uh, oh, oh I heard it, I heard it. We're on the prowl. Um, I've heard it. I'm going to it. We're gonna fight it. And I'm gonna go over the strategy of Embermain. For all the new players and uh yeah this this will go well because if you're fighting bloodfire embermane it's pretty much the same fight it has more attacks and its interruptible attack is different it has different versions of it but the strategy especially if you're playing in a group is the same and i'll tell you why because embermane likes charging around a lot and so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna gravitate towards the center of the arena i'm gonna wait for embermane to come to me i'm gonna get the em interrupt and that's when i'm going to strike i'm gonna let embermane play its game i'm gonna be playing my own game and every time my game is going to be better than embermane's that is my game plan When Embermane is uh, kind of staying still, keep the damage going. When it runs away, you just wait. I'm getting really fortunate. Usually it doesn't hang around this long. I don't mind trades because Embermane stays on the ground for a very long time and I have a lot of speed. I am a sword player. Now, the interruptible attack can be hit by chain blades. Yeah, we, it's, it's an interrupt. Hopefully, y'all kind of understand what an interrupt is at this point. You know, you see the orange 
indicators above its head. That means you can hit it and interrupt it. Not every single attack in the game can interrupt. You know, repeaters have a, lo a harder time interrupting. Um, and unfortunately, we haven't unlocked the interrupting grenades yet. Uh, but if you have the saboteur's grip, uh, that's a little bit more. It's a little crafty to use and has a cooldown. And... But getting the interrupt, like this whole fight is just, can you interrupt? Question mark. And if the answer is yes, then you win. So notice how I'm not, I see new players doing this a lot. They'll be chasing Embermane all over the place. Like it, and they're, they'll be scattered. If you're in a group, this is what you do. If you're in a group, all four of you, this is the game right now. You're looking at it. We just stand still. Embermane's going to run around, but it's always going to come back to you. If you're all piled on top of each other like hamsters, then you're going to get the interrupt. You know, one of you is going to get it, hopefully. If all four of you get hit, then, you know, you need to, you need to consider uh, a new slaying profession. Preferably, that is an Embermane. But, you know, you just got to practice and you just, yeah, just just pile, pile on top. Just think of the hamsters. When you're fighting Embermane, think of hamsters. That's all you got to do. Hamsters bring victory. And so there's a quest to get two breaks from Embermane. Y'all are going to have to fight over who breaks what and and stuff because it's not shared. Good luck. And yeah, or, you know, go in solo. Try Embermane solo because this is a good way to practice interrupting. Even if... You, uh, you can't do it flawlessly. You know, it's going to solidify the fact that you know how to interrupt and you know what it is and you're going to go for it more frequently. And that's, that's already an, an upgrade, right? Like that's a, that's a, that's a gain. I love that combo. You interrupt, pop the overdrive, and then you're just right there on it. I love it. I love the sword. Love the sword. It's a great weapon. It gets so much hate. Oh, we got a bounty token. Nice. That's one thing I haven't been doing in these videos is uh, my bounties. And um, I should be. But the sword gets a lot of hate because it's like the tutorial weapon. And I and I think I said this earlier in the, in the, in the videos where sword gets kind of like the sword and shield treatment in, in Monster Hunter. It's like oh it's the easy weapon there's so much depth to the sword and there's so many cool things that you can do with the sword people downplay it don't let people downplay your play because you play the sword because your fundamentals the sword teaches the fundamentals and if your fundamentals are trash then you're gonna get clapped don't get clapped don't be the guy that goes down all the time all right but uh we have a uh chamomile tea today i do enjoy tea uh i do drink coffee as well but uh not as much i don't i i drink my coffee black and uh this loading screen is taking so long what's happening help well we're back we did it we've done the thing we still have chamomile tea as a spare and we defeated Embermane. Now the question is, did we get credit? Because the game wanted me to break parts and we still have them. We have uh, bounties to draft. We'll do that really fast. Uh, we're going to be fighting some neutrals. We're going to be playing chain blades too. Nice. Hmm. It seemed like it took some time to load in there. That was the issue there. But got our ember main lantern unlocked that doesn't mean that we have it crafted but we have it unlocked so we can go into crafting we did get some ember main part breaks do you need quite a bit and um i'm not sure if i want to do this yet because i don't think i'm going to use it i'm actually enjoying the shrike lantern i'm enjoying my time with the with the shrike lantern and i'm going to take this opportunity to actually craft the last piece of my ember main gear because that's going to get me some mastery. And I'm I'm valuing that mastery more than I am the lantern craft 
if I'm an axe player, maybe I'll do that. Uh, and hammer is also good. The slower weapons, if you're if you're thinking, you know, I want to try a new lantern, go for it. You know, I'm you know I'm even. I'll just say if you want to craft the Ember Man lantern, craft the Ember Man lantern. Who am I to tell you what to do? Who am I? Uh, we will craft the Ember Axe. We're working on our Axe Mastery. We'll craft the War Pike if we can. We cannot. Unfortunate. And then we'll we'll do what we were seeking. Which is get the Inferno Fangs to plus five. And so we are going to... We're going to assess our gear currently. Because what I want to do is kind of maximize at this current point of the game. We have gotten very lucky. We have plus six Rage Hunter, plus five overpower. This couldn't honestly be any better because, yeah, that's just a lot of damage. That's just a lot of damage. We got 40%, 50%. You know, if, if you don't have these cells, it's totally fine. But... The two cells for damage that you want at this stage in the game are some nice attack speed cells. Evasive Fury is nice. You know, if you're practicing, you're dodging and are able to dodge. Um, Evasive Fury is nice. Conduit is nice. You definitely want to get Conduit to plus six ASAP. We have that plus two Ethereum Contum that I want to get. Uh, but Overpower and Rage Hunter are like very strong damage uh options and what better way to uh to show that power than with the hellion weapons and the hellion chain blades easily the best chain blades in the game and so let's uh let's optimize here i i think we're looking pretty good but i kind of want to you know we crafted all this armor and i kind of want to show you how it operates we have this all right i think we missed out on an overpower but we gained some attack speed with our molten we put a plus one predator and we got a plus two predator and i said earlier that we're not going to be using that so we'll just throw in a blade storm heck it so we lost a little bit of overpower so that's totally fine but hmm or did we? We'll do this. I like that better. So, we have some pretty cool effects on our armor. That's really nice. Maybe we'll uh, change our boots too. What were we using? Adrenaline. Ew. I'm ready for an upgrade. We got our Nasher gear. Put on our Nasher boots. We got some tough there. Tough. Uh, let's go see if we can upgrade our... Yeah, sure. It's really fast. We're optimizing. Hmm. I'm looking at our boot options. I still really want these. We'll go back for them eventually. The conditioning will be nice, but conditioning one doesn't really get us much. And tough one, or tough two, whatever it turns into. Well, oh no, it's plus six. Plus six for plus two. So once we uh once we start doing dyers and starting to get the uh, the new arcanite from and parts from the dyer nasher we'll be able to upgrade that to our tough plus two but we also get an additional power slot here and that's why i actually went with that because now i have molten three amazing uh which is dealing damage generates two molten hearts on a 23 second cooldown granting immunity to burning and increased attack speed and movement speed. Now, each Molten Heart is a eight second duration buff. So they stack together and they cap out at 24. So it's a 23 second cooldown to generate Molten Hearts. So at plus six, you'll be able to keep that up indefinitely as long as you're, um, you know, picking up the... Uh... All right, actually, I think the, the, the buff actually, or the cooldown gets lowered the further you go. So now, what I want to do is take my super sweet Hellion Chains and go fight some Shock Behemoths because we need a Shock Hammer. So we'll do a few Chain Blade Hunts and then we'll uh, 
we'll move on and we'll start plucking away at these uh these other dyers nice we got Nene, and that is who I wanted us to fight. I'm glad we didn't get Stormclaw. I was saying, I was thinking to myself, maybe if I don't, maybe if I don't think about Stormclaw, we won't get Stormclaw, and we didn't. So we got Nene, and Nene is a little bit of a bully, and so we'll talk about its fight. It's a new behemoth we haven't talked about, and um, yeah, because it can be a little bit tricky and this is a fight that i would definitely bring you know much like valamir i think nene kind of has the same i, I keep saying nene nezaga is uh is kind of the same archetype like it's a big hulking bully that it but in this case it's smaller and is a threat there's this are what the uh, molten orbs look like you've seen them during the hellion fight i'm sure I'm just going to drill into this. Boy, I'm using my special to get away. Using my light attack to kind of re-engage. Going over it. Axe is really good against Nene as well. I'm just used to calling it Nene. Y'all are going to have to deal with it. And I'm just sticking... You see that 500? Ooh, we're dealing damage. I'm getting excited. Oof. Nene is slow for the most part, but it does have that slide attack, which is pretty annoying. Its attacks do, uh, do shock you as well. Let's talk about these pylons. Now, we've seen in Stormclaw... You know, you can treat this kind of like Stormclaw, or you can just kind of reflect him back into the pylons. Now, Nene has two different forms of pylons, so. That you can reflect back. This one has multiple prongs, and it's what triggers its Aether form. When it goes into Aether form, it, it spawns this, and we'll start firing these like chain lightnings or like lightning pillars at at random slayers or it will attach to the pylon and then fire a big orb which is what i reflected back when you break that you get a huge opening and so nene is just gonna have to kind of take it i'm just kind of drilling the head because i want the ko and then i'll start going for other parts maybe we'll cut the tail the tail's probably worth something The hitbox is a little weird on the tail. It's a little low to the ground. Chain blades don't really have a problem with it, but other weapons might. Um, I struggle with it a little bit on the sword, but... For the most part, my strategy is... Uh, creating openings via hitting the head a lot. Keeping my eye out. Now, when you're playing in a party... When you're playing in a party, more pylons are going to be spawning because it, 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 it scales based on the the amount of slayers that are encountering Nezaga. So more having like one person going around and breaking them is totally, totally worth it. Now, a great thing about Nene, if you manage to beat it, its gear is really good at defeating itself. So if you really struggled with this fight, but you managed to, you know, uh, break through somehow, get Nezaga's armor and get shockproof or... Um, insulated is what it's called shockproof it is called insulated and we'll go just talk about it really quickly now these chain blades are popping off they uh they deal you see that we got two fire procs during that fight that was really cool and the chain blades are really good at reflecting back those orbs you don't need to reflect back the orbs just dodge them and then go break the pylons but also don't let nene kind of do its own thing as well you want to have some people on it, maybe one person breaking pylons. If you're playing in like a full stack, excuse me, the insulated is on the boots. The boots are gonna have a defense socket. So you'll be able to put insulated there and insulated uh, naturally on the boots. That's the most important piece if you're looking to counter a Zaga. Other than that, you can get the medic. This is more of like a support perk res your friends faster so it's a good support set 
but we're going to craft the boots and maybe we'll throw a few upgrades into it in case we get Izaga again. Um, the second one I would probably go for is the chest if you need a little bit more armor. But not only are we getting insulated to reduce the shock status, if we keep getting shocked, can't use our potions. Now you can clear ins uh, the shock debuff by hitting the behemoth or uh, having insulated or just waiting it out. But what you want to do ultimately is not get hit at all. But insulated is going to help you with the learning curve of that fight. And then also you're going to get extra resistance for wearing lightning based armor. Sorry, I was trying to get words out and it was uh, it was a little tough for me. But moving on, let's make our hammer. That's what I was doing. That's what we're doing. Crafting. Hammer. All right, we're plus five. Thundering Maul. That didn't take nearly as much time as I thought. So we got a little bit of a chain blade lesson and a little bit of a uh, Nezaga lesson. I'm sure Nezaga will be back. I am not worried about that. Now we're going up against Rockfall, which means that mm, nothing really here stands out except tough. We have Concussive Salvo. And we're all plus fives. We got some tough. Got plus two tough, two overpower, three molten. I like this. Now we could go. Let's use the Ember Mains. Oh, we didn't craft it. Never mind. We'll just keep the strike one then. Sorry, I'm losing my place. But. Ooh, we can patrol. Ooh. You can get Valamir here. Okay. I remember I was just like, no, you can't patrol it. Surprise. Um, Should we see what we get? I'm tempted. Sure. We'll just patrol it. Heck it. We'll just send it. Why why focus on particular hunts when we can just not worry about it? Now, I want to talk about something because that Nezaga fight, we didn't have, you know, Terra Chain Blades. But if I was using the Terra Axe, I would chop through that thing, right? But the Hellion Chain Blades are that good. And uh, made pretty quick work of it. I was pretty impressed, actually. But, elemental affinity is a thing, so we're going to see what we get. We don't have an umbral weapon to deal with Valamir, but we're going to play the hammer, I reckon, anyway. We could go the axe again. Mm, we don't play a lot of hammer. We don't play a lot of hammer. We have a plus five hammer. Let's send it. Now, the Drask hammer deals 30% damage at max level, I should say. I think we're at a 10% right now. 10% extra damage to the head of Valamir. So we're going to be going for the head a lot. But we're also going to keep going for those breaks. Now the nice thing is that we have a shock hammer, which means we're going to generate a little bit of uh, shock prockiness. It's going to get stunned, and we have that overpower. So that's an extra moment where overpower is going to be active. Now let's talk about the hammer. We haven't. It's been a while since we played the hammer. Like I said, going for the face. I want my attack speed. Getting those Molten Hearts. We're playing with a brand new, you know, perk. There's a pretty big opening right here. Gonna hug Valamir a little bit. Give him a hug. Charging the, uh, the Aether charged ammo. Slam dunk. You can see it's almost staggered already. Dang. That took a long time to cast. Bonk. Gonna just keep going for Valamir's face. Tried to roll, but I'm bad. Staggering genius. The game says I'm a genius. It must be true. Talk about the hammer. All right. Um, you can rocket jump. Rocket jump's good. You can double blast on the rocket jump to get a little bit more speed. Pressing light attack. I got stuck on Valamir. That kind of sucked. Couldn't do anything there.
focusing super hard. <laughs> but the uh, the rocket jump is kind of like uh, I'm gonna show you on my mouse. So here's my heavy attack, and here's my uh, light attack. This. Oh god, the lasers. It's gonna be like that kind of motion. Valamir, I'm trying to teach over here. All right. Boom. Right. You can mash it. You can mash it if you're if you're not doing it properly, but you know, heck it, dude. Ow, my body. No, give me this. All right, healing. We're invulnerable. I'm gonna stun it again. Boom. Why is Valamir such a bully? Okay. It's kind of like a. I don't know how to describe the motion, but. I tried so hard. I don't know why I tried to rocket jump in though. Uh, I call it that that the rocket jump, the uh, the hammer jump. Break this. Okay, that's over. I'm gonna aether slam here. The shockwaves will actually go through and ooh break uh break Valamir's horn. So Valamir has a horn break and a head break. That's something worth knowing. I'm just going to kind of maneuver my way from the left and right of the head as it kind of goes for me. That's my new strategy. Got the KO again. You can see that we staggered it three times already. That's the power of the hammer. We'd probably be doing the same thing on the Aether Strikers as well. I just wanted to reach, reload my ammo there. Get whatever damage in I could. I hear it over here, so we're going to run over here. We're going to say see you later lasers broke that leg go for this leg back here see what happens all right valamir is running it's fine pop another bulwark it was very strange that i lagged or something that way Whew, it's taking a little bit more focus than i was expecting Valamir is a bully, much more than I remember, but Riftstalker is even more of a bully in the early stages. But we're going to be prepared because we're actually fighting Valamir. It's nice that they... Do we have a quest? We don't have a quest to fight. We have Before the Dawn, and I assume that turns into... So, Phoenix Labs did us a favor. So when Valamir and Riftstalker were implemented into the game... There was actually a quest to choose either or. Like, do you want to fight Valamir or do you want to fight Riftstalker? Because they counter each other, right? And so, a lot of people chose Riftstalker because Valamir is a big old bully. Little did they know that Riftstalker is also a bully. So, it's nice that they had us beat Valamir first and the reason for that is because its weapons deal with Riftstalker almost exclusively and once we get to it we'll talk about it just know that the game is actually setting you up for success I'm gonna try and get a KO maybe create an opening here wonder how close we are to a shock frog now that it ran though Ooh, nice gonna break there that was very lucky I'm going to get hit here because I'm very slow. Remember Bulwark's active? No, we don't. Heck, now we do. We'll heal up. I ain't afraid to heal. I ain't afraid. I'm going to jump in. So there's actually a, a, not really a technique, but a uh, mechanic called priming on the hammer. And that's that little like charge, that pause. Where... You actually load a shot into the hammer when you're swinging it. It deals additional damage as well as uh, dealing additional stagger damage. So if you're trying to secure a little bit more stagger damage, you don't want to do it all the time because you want to have ammo to load into the Aether Slam, which is the Shockwaves your combo finisher and if you don't have that 
And you're gonna be... Ooh, we got a shock rock. Nice. Try and break this leg before Valamir dies. Which we did. Nice. Gonna see if we can get this one. It's already broken. Already broken. Is the head broken? Now it is. Got him. We'll just go for the kill. Another stagger? Show it to me. Show me the stagger. Now, the optimal combo, because of how fast it gets you into the Aether Slam, is the double uppercut hammer swing. When you have a lot of attack speed, you'll even you'll get there even faster. Um, that's just something I want to tell people. I'm not a hammer master. I'm not. I did play the repeaters and the hammer the least, but uh, the most optimal combo there is to just kind of spam your Aether Slam if you're trying to just kind of go all out is doing that double uppercut combo, which looking at the repeating uppercut. So this is a forward uh, motion, this arrow key. So it's a light attack holding forward. So light attack, hold forward, then two light attacks, and then you'll hammer jump, which is the Aether Slam. So this combo and then a right click at the end will cause that combo to come out. That is a question that happens um, in the stream pretty commonly. You know, how do I do the uppercut combo? So in case someone was wondering and they're this far in the playthrough, that will be there. We have defeated a Valamir. Do we have enough? That's a tail. It's probably a tail piece. Ooh, we could ax a Riftstalker. That'd be pretty rough though. I would wager that that would be pretty rough. Mm, I kind of want to do it just because I know it would be hard, though. Hmm. Hmm. Tempting. Sure. Just so we don't have to fight it again. Right? So this takes uh, Arcanite. So we're going to... Or uh, the, the new Arcanite. So we're going to spend it. So we just patrolled Valamir, right? And we're dropping our extra extra stacks on that. Crafted the vet. Uh, we got five by five done for using the hammer. And we did before the dawn. We got some dull arc stone from that, which is what we just used to upgrade our Valamir axe. Bring on the night hunt rift stalker. Craft an umbral weapon with Will's Borman. Nice. This will be uh, a lot of fun. Fighting rift stalker. I need one. That's unfortunate. All right. Valamir's decree. How come you have... What is this? Why? Tell me. All right. Well, maybe that's a bug or something. So Riftstalker. Shadow Cat. Bring on the night is next. Craft and equip armor with a total of 350 resist. Sounds like a lot of patrols. Right now we're at 300. So what is that? Plus seven? Plus eight? I think that's like plus eight or something. Let's see if we can upgrade anything here. Nope, we need more Hellion pieces, but we do have enough Arc Stone to get our plus two. So this is where a little bit of farming is going to take place. That's three tails, three tails, three tails. Dang, you need a lot of tails to upgrade these. That's a lot of Hellion. Still worth doing though. Hmm. Ah, the Valamir armor. Let's review. Lucent on the helmet. With power slot, not really used too much. The chest piece has nine lives. I was telling you about this. This is a really good piece if you're having if you're struggling with Valamir. Uh, nine lives and the power socket on the chest is really good. And the boots I use on a pretty frequent basis. So we'll actually, heck it, we'll send it. We'll send it on the Valamir boots. And uh, I think that's where we're gonna draw a close on this episode. The hammer could have been a number one. Could have. We would have uh, rocked that a little bit more. Again, I'm not very good with the hammer, but eh. It was all right. We got our five by five done and uh, we got some bounties done. And ultimately moving towards the 
tail end of dire warnings. Like, I think we could probably finish off just about everything here in uh, maybe like two more episodes. So that's where we're at. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If you want to uh, support the channel, you can subscribe. You can use creator code RevyRed in the Dauntless in-game store. And I stream on Twitch. You can hit me up there. The, everything will be in the description down below. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And I will see you on the Shattered Isles.